Good morning to all. Welcome to Machine Learning Video. This is Swapna. Today's our topic is Inductive Analytical Approaches to Learning. The learning problem is defined like this. The input given for this learning problem is set of training examples, domain theory and a space of the candidate hypothesis. Set of training examples are represented with the notation capital D and domain training theory is represented with the capital B and uh, candidate hypothesis is represented with the capital H and here we are giving the set of training examples possibly containing the errors. Here we are not specifying that exactly but there is a possibility of the errors in the training examples and also we are providing the domain theory which may be the possible uh, way there is a possibility of containing errors and we are providing the candidate hypothesis. What we are going to determine here as the output is the best fits hypothesis which best fits for the training examples as well as for the domain theory. A hypothesis that best fits the training examples and the domain theory. To find that best fit hypothesis which will fits for the training examples as well as the domain theory, there are the two approaches. In that, first approach is to find the best fit. First, we need to find the error D and error B of H. Error D of H is the proportion of examples or proportion of the training examples from the D that are misclassified by the hypothesis. Here, error D is defined to be the proportion of examples from the set of training examples which are misclassified by that particular hypothesis that is error D of H. And next one is the error B of H. With respect to the domain theory, what is the probability of that particular hypothesis will disagree with the classification? And here we are um, finding that probability of disagree with the classification of a randomly chosen instances. Here we are finding that randomly chosen examples are disagreeing with the classification of the domain theory. That probability are we are considering as error B of H. And to find that best fit after finding these two errors, we need to minimize the combination of measure of these errors by adding or by hmm, providing some weights to with this summation of these. We need to minimize the, part for the particular hypothesis these two errors. Then with that we can consider as a best fit hypothesis. Further formula is the H belongs to capital H that means particular uh, hypothesis is belonging to the hypothesis candidate hypothesis space minimizing the KD error D of H plus KB error B of H. KD and KB are the weights. So depending upon this particular weights to assigning these two, uh, these two variables depending upon that number particular number assigning to these two variables it minimizes these two errors these two error d of h error b of h then that hypothesis we can consider as a best fit hypothesis so to assign the values for the kb and kbh there is no clear information but we are taking the relative info, relative in importance or relative information. If you have the poor theory and great deal of reliable data, then give the best weight for the error DH. That means we can assign the best weight for the KD whenever we are having the poor theory. And we can go for the second option if we are having the strong theory, but small samples are there with the very noisy data. We are having the strong domain theory, but we are having the simple small sample of training examples which will contain the noisy, noisy information. Then give the more weight for the KB, more weight for the KB. If you are having the less theory or poor theory, but whatever the training examples are exact or complete for training examples are there, then give the more weight for the KD. If you are having the strong theory, but we are having the sam few samples of uh, training examples with the noisy data, with the noisy data, then give the more weight for the KB. So, the if the learner does not know in advance the quality of the data and quality of the training um, domain theory and the training data. If you know that 
data is poor or strong and how many samples are there if the samples are containing noisy data or not if you know that one then only we can assign these type of values for the kb and kd if you don't know that one if you don't know that one then there, there is no information or unclear information um, to uh, to assign the weights for these two error components so this is the first approach second approach for this learning problem to find the best hypo best fit hypothesis is bayes theorem in the bayes theorem perspective we use the uh, we, uh, we use the terms of p of h p of d p of d by h and here d is the observed data b is the prior knowledge by using the prior knowledge it will finds the prior probability and by using these two, by using these information by using the prior knowledge and these probabilities it can find the posterior probability and here according to the bayes theorem which posterior probability is greatest that we can consider as a best fit hypothesis best fit hypothesis to find that one it uses the prior knowledge as well as the observed data so this is the second approach but there is unfortunately there is a little problem or a simple disadvantage is there according to the bayes theorem it assumes it containing the all the perfect knowledge when when if in practically if these quantities are imperfect then it cannot describe or it cannot combine them with the observed data and at that time it will give the measure of the expected posterior probability not the exact posterior probability to so it can give the expected posterior probability so by using by knowing these two type of approaches we are simply simplifying or we are simply saying that for the learning problem minimizing combined measures of the error hypothesis over the data and domain theory is the best by the within these two approaches we are ending with this statement next one to characterize the learning methods or such algorithms uh, by describing the hypothesis to characterize that we require the describing of the hypothesis space and hypothesis space as we know all right from the first topic onwards in the machine learning hypothesis space completely is represented with the capital h and within this every hypothesis is represented with the small h here in this to characterize that uh, our learning methods we are describing the hypothesis to describe that one we are using the terminology of hypothesis space as a capital h and initial hypothesis here is represented with the h not and also the set of operations the set of operations to define the individual search steps to search for the best fit algorithm and whatever the goal is goal criterion is there that is represented with the capital g the set of operators or set of operations for the every individual step in the search that are represented with the capital o that are represented with the capital o here three <coughs> Four terms. The four terms we are using. Complete hypothesis space is represented with the capital H. Initial hypothesis is represented with the H naught, and the set of operators in the search is represented with the capital O. The whatever the goal criterion, final goal is there, that is represented with the G. By describing all hypothesis space, we can characterize the learning methods or search algorithms. So for this. to describe that one there are the three different methods are there in these three different methods it is using the prior knowledge to alter the search performed by the purely inductive methods so to alter that one it is using the prior knowledge and there are three different methods are there in that first we are going for the first method and whatever the example where it is using in which example it is using the first method that also we are going to know so first method is use the prior knowledge to derive an initial hypothesis from which to begin the search so by using the prior knowledge derive the initial hypothesis within the hypothesis space where we need to start the search that we are considering as a initial hypothesis to derive that one it is using the prior knowledge 
So in this approach, the prior knowledge or whatever the domain theory it is using that is represented with the capital B, and it is used to construct the initial hypothesis. What is initial hypothesis notation? H naught. And here they are considering in this inductive method consistent with the B. Why we are considering this one as the purely inductive means at every step. At every step, there are, we are going for the new hypothesis. We are finding a new literals. We are adding new literals. We are adding. At last, we will get the updated hypothesis, which will best fits for the training examples as well as the domain theory. So, where we are using this type of method, prior knowledge using to find or derive the initial hypothesis is in the key band system, knowledge based analysis network system. So, in this system, it learns the artificial neural networks. In that, it uses the prior knowledge to design the internal connections and to assign the weights for the initial network. And for that work, it uses that one so that the initial network is perfectly consistent with the given, with the given domain theory. And this initial network hypothesis is refined inductively by using that back propagation algorithm to assign the weights to assign the weights and to design the internal internal connections in the neural networks it uses the back propagation algorithm and begin the search at the hypothesis consistent with the domain theory which makes it more likely that the final how whatever the final output we are getting that the hypothesis is will better fits for this Theory. Now we are going for the second method. So in this second method, it uses the prior knowledge to alter the objective of the hypothesis space search. That means whatever the goal criterion is there to alter that or to update that to modify that. Here in this method, it uses the prior knowledge. So to goal or whatever the objective is here, we are using the notation of capital G. So that it is modified to require the Output hypothesis. Why we they are modifying that goal means to find that output hypothesis which will fit for the domain theory as well as for the training examples. And this type of method is used in the example of EBNN system, EBN system. Here in this also, it also lends the neural networks. It is also using the inductive learning method of neural networks. And here it performs. Here it performs a balance by using the gradient descent search. And in gradient descent search, already we know this type of algorithm or this type of approach we already know in previous chapters of the machine learning. So, in gradient descent search, it minimizes the squared error of the network over the training data. So, here also it is using the same method in EBNN. And it also performs the gradient descent to optimize the different criterions, it is used firstly to minimize the square error, squared error of the network and also it performs to find that optimization. And the modified criterion also includes the additional term that measures the error of the learner network relative to the domain theory. So, whatever the modified criterion it is there, it includes the additional terms. Next, third method is there, using the prior knowledge to alter the available search steps. So, already we know, uh, in to describe the hypothesis space, three different things are there. Find deriving the initial hypothesis and set of operations as well as last one is the goal criterion. In first two approaches, in first two methods, first they derived the initial hypothesis and this type of methodology is used in EBNN system. Next method is here, modifying or updating the goal criterion. That type of method is used in EBNN system. And also, it is your first method, KBNN is using the back propagation algorithm. EBNN is using the stochastic approach. <coughs> Next, third method. Here, it is using the prior, prior knowledge to uh, alter or modify the search steps. 
For this example is FOCL algorithm. FOCL algorithm is based on the inductive system of the FOIL algorithm. Already we know about the FOIL algorithm in previous chapters, in previous videos. That is first order inductive learning method. In this, it conducts the greedy search method through the space of the possible Hahn classes. And at each step, it is revising the current hypothesis and adding the new literals and updating that. Updating the Hahn classes. And it also uses the domain theory to expand the alternative set of alternatives available to revise that hypothesis. So it can use the domain theory to expand that alternatives. And FOCL also allows the single step moves through the hypothesis space that would correspond to the many steps using the virginal inductive algorithm. It also uses the single step moves. That means every time single step it moves through the hypothesis space to find that one, to find the best fit hypothesis. And this we can also call as a macro moves. Macro moves. Also we can call as a macro moves. At last we will find best fit hypothesis. Which can best fit for the domain theory as well as for training exam. By this, I am ending this video. We will meet in the next video. Thank you.